magical star beings, this is Psychic Siren Tarot and welcome to the channel. In today's reading we're going to be taking a look at the person on your mind and their favorite things about you. So we actually started recording at 12.22 on the clock so very excited to see what divine messages come out today. Um, I just did my nails so if there are imperfections sorry about that but yeah. Let me show you our crystals. So we have amethyst first. We have introspection for your card. For pile number two, we have the shell. And we have the card Trust. And for pile number three, we have Rose Quartz. And we have the card Divine Love. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds to pick a pile. Pick whichever pile you're most drawn to, the one that is calling out to your soul the most, and that will be your pile for today. But of course, if you are drawn to more than one pile, your intuition may lead you to more messages. Okay, so once you're done picking a pile, please find the timestamps for your pile in the description box below, and then I'll see you at your reading. Hi there my pile number ones, if you chose this amethyst crystal and the card introspection, this reading is for you. We're going to be taking a look at their favorite things about you, for the person on your mind. So the card you chose has a crystal on it, um, as well here on the side it says Asturion, so it's fluorite, and it's card number 15. This is from the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle. We're also going to be using the Beyond Lemuria Oracle Deck, the Starseed Oracle Deck, and the Crystal Magic Tarot. So please be reminded this is a general reading. Only take what resonates, leave the rest. By the way, uh, for your pile, as I started, just as I started, I heard a helicopter go by. So that could be significant for someone here. Most people don't go in helicopters, but that could symbolize something for you and this person. So maybe some of you could travel a lot with this person, maybe one or two of you, or maybe others of you, they want to one day travel with you. Um, or if there's something here about long distance connections for some of you, this is not gonna resonate with everyone, maybe one or two people something about that is coming through or when we look at planes helicopters you know they're kind of flying in the sky and they're going from point a to point b which represents movement so maybe this person sees you you know with the amethyst and the purple here sees like a vision for your connection for the future and how this can move forward from point A to point B. So that's kind of what I get here. Take it as it resonates. Okay, so spirit guides of my pile number ones. Spirit guides, oh my gosh. So we have awakened awareness. I didn't even have to ask the question. Card number 17. So I said something about seeing a vision for the future. Here we see an eye. I think that is a huge confirmation because amethyst is all about you know, psychicness and intuition. This person may also be, yes, like having a vision for the future with you or for the future in general, but then also feeling intuitively like this can work. Like I do, I do see something here that it can work, if that makes sense. At the back of the deck, we have harmonic flight. 
such a beautiful card. May I please look into their favorite things about my pile number ones for the person on their mind. What are their favorite things about pile one? So we have fallen to my arms with surrender, holding the opposites and extremes of life. And when I pulled this card, I felt a sacral chakra release. Here we see the energy of a mother holding onto a baby. So for some of you, you could be parents. For some of you. For others of you, maybe this person, like I said, going into that vision of the future, if you two would like kids together, maybe they can see that or see themselves, you know, having pets with you, having that sense of stability with you or creating something with you. Because when we think of a baby, it's an energy of divine creation. So maybe creating a life with you, if that makes sense. Um, but with the sacral chakra is also about our deep emotions. It's also our connection to our confidence within ourself and you know the way we feel about ourselves it's also our connection to our divine sensuality so i do feel like this person does feel very attracted to you in some way that's something coming up very strongly but then there's also this energy of feeling like the sense of emotional release with you the sense of Maybe this person feeling more emotional around you or feeling like they can open up more about their emotional aspects with you more than with others. Like there's a sense of like vulnerability, like I'm giving my heart to you and I'm opening up about what I'm feeling when I normally wouldn't. So you make this person feel less alone in the world since this card is at the back of the deck. You're not alone. Okay, beautiful. So I was hearing that song that's like, I'm a single lady, I'm a single lady. <laughs> so I don't know, like maybe some of you, you know in that music video how she shows her hand and she like wants that ring. <laughs> maybe some of you joke with this person about that. Like, of course, if this is romantic, but I think most of you are asking about something romantic. However, like... Yeah, maybe some of you like joke about that, like about things like marriage and things like that um, if you're not already married to this person. Uh, but maybe this person also sees that potential for that in the future for a lot of you. And I don't just say that in my readings because I think it's a very big thing to just say that. But I mean, I heard that song. We are seeing all these signs about visions. And actually, when I got your tarot cards, um, I was hearing someone outside do some work on the house. And it gives me that energy of building, like this person wanting to build something up with you, wanting to build a life with you. You know, something like that is coming through. So spirit guides on my pile, number ones. What are their favorite things about my pile, number ones? We have the Knight of Swords with Copper showing up first. What are their favorite things about my pile, number ones? We have the Tower with Black Tourmaline. What are their favorite things about my pile, number ones? We have the Fool with Green Aventrine. We have the Ace of Swords with Tiger's Eye. Ah, I see where this reading is going. We have the Page of Pentacles with Fluorite. So we have two Fluorite showing up. So something about the fluoride crystal, properties of it are exaggerate, exaggerated within this reading um, in your personality traits. So we'll see what that means in a bit. Let me just get all your cards out. Two lost cards for their favorite things about pile number ones. 
We have the Four of Cups with Pink Halite. Okay, I feel this one. The Devil with Amethyst. So this is their favorite things about you, and here Amethyst is also um, emphasized. So the Crystal Fluorite and Amethyst are emphasized. But since this is their favorite things about you, usually I would read this Devil card in a different way, like, you know, too much self-love, too much like that. But in this case, I read it as something different, like... Kind of reminds me of, you know, some of the female rappers like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, you know, how they have that type of energy where they have so much self-love and confidence. It kind of reminds me of that. Like maybe this person sees you to be like that and admires that about you. So my pile number ones, what are their favorite things about you? So if we're talking about romantic love here, with the snake here, I'm getting this vibe, like how I spoke about sacral chakra energy. Of course, when we talk about their favorite things about you, there could also be some physical aspects of things they like about you and some personality aspects. So since we have the eye here, <laughs> you're very good looking to look at. And I mean, your person's coming up as the knight of swords. It's like, or you're coming up as the Knight of Swords, or your connection, it's like you want to rush towards each other in some way. Um, and I guess here we see a man, but it regardless of like if you're a man or a woman or non-binary, there's something about your body showing up that they're very attracted to. Definitely your face too, they're very physically attracted to you, That's that's what I want to say here. Uh, firstly, when I talk about physical aspects of their favorite things, I think their favorite thing is to look at you and stare at you. Not their whole favorite thing, but it's part of it. Uh, because there is definitely some personality traits too, don't get me wrong. It's not just that, but when we think of a person, we also think of how they look, you know. And when this person is sitting with you, I see them, you know, physically admiring your appearance thinking that you are either very beautiful or handsome or attractive in some way if this is a romantic connection and there is definitely a lot of sensuality here too uh the sense of them being attracted to your body thinking it's nice to just sit to sit next to you and talk to you and look at you it's like you have an aesthetic to the way that you look and this person definitely admires your your presence in general. Definitely they find you seductive in some way and there is temptation here with the snake, like finding you very tempting in some way. <laughs> like for example, I'm seeing someone sit with you, your person that we're asking about if this is romantic and look at you and just stare at you and maybe think of kissing you or something like that. Like you're just giving off the very seductive vibe to this person and I did feel the sacral chakra energies in the beginning of your reading. They definitely find your face very attractive too, they like to look at you but they also like to talk to you and spend time with you with the ace of swords. They definitely enjoy conversations with you and like I said earlier with the tower or the black tourmaline and the fall into my arms card is giving me the vibe like this person feels very comfortable with their emotions with you. Uh, it feels like because it says black tourmaline on the tower card, I feel this person is maybe someone that is usually very protective of their inner emotions. You know, black tourmaline is a crystal of protection. So when it shows up with the tower, it's giving you this vibe like this person usually protects what they're feeling inside, um, tries not to speak it out to the world with the Ace of Swords, tries not to show it to the whole world, you know, what they are internally going through, um, maybe the distress, stress, chaos, traumas they've gone through, things they've gone through in general that weren't necessarily great. I feel like this person sort of wants to 
hide that from the world or not necessarily hide it, but they don't feel necessarily comfortable sharing that with the world. But when it comes to you, it feels like this person can let their protective mechanisms down with a tower card um, and kind of let all their emotions out when it comes to you, even if they're not someone that is fully letting out all their emotions because I feel like this is a person that has a hard time doing that or has a hard time sometimes expressing what they're feeling or expressing what's on their mind or what they're going through on an emotional aspect. So sometimes it takes um, some time with the tiger's eye on the ace of swords because tiger's eye relates to the the root chakra, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but it, it gives me a very grounding vibe and that type of vibe of earth and like slow and steady. So this person may open up to you in a very slow and steady way in terms of communication, but they feel like one of their favorite things about you is the fact that they're able to surrender and open up their heart to you, open up that vulnerable aspect of themselves to you and allow you to be there and hold them and comfort them while they're going through extremes in life, while they're going through stresses or healing from traumas or, um, you know, when they're just going through not so great or challenging or chaotic things in life, it feels like they can always turn to you Whenever they need you most, whenever they need someone, they feel they can turn to you. And I'm tearing up as I say this, so I don't think this person would actually say this to you maybe until later on, but um, maybe they're not someone usually expressive for some of you about these things, but I feel tears coming out of my eye, like tears of joy, like this type of feeling of you're always there for me, and even when I don't, open up. I know you're always there. Whenever I have a problem or a challenge, I know I can always come to you and you're always going to be there for me and nurture me, hold me, um, have compassion for me, listen, or if I need advice, give me advice, words of wisdom. Since you chose the amethyst crystal, I feel this person sees you as someone very intuitive you know amethyst came up twice with the crystal in this so very very interesting that I was drawn to amethyst for you but it's like this person sees you as very intuitive very connected to your own spirituality your own intuition your own you know third eye you're very connected to that mystic aspect of yourself and as I'm closing my eyes spirit is showing me both a swan but also a peacock and a love letter. And someone's closing up this love letter. So the vibe it gives me is this person not only finds this psychic, intuitive, empathetic energy of you sexy, <laughs> um, it kind of reminds me of, you know, when Chucky is on the floor, like there's a meme that went around I think last year or the year before where Chucky's on the floor and his wife in human form is sitting there and doing like a spell on him <laughs> is giving me that vibe of like um ooh, you're so mystical even if it's not like witchy I'm not saying you have to be a witch or anything but it's giving me that vibe of like ooh, you're mystical like do crystal healing on me or do tarot on me like um or speak about those spiritual deep things spiritual topics deep things that you're interested in um it gives me that vibe of like ooh mystical sexy <laughs> does that make sense um but it's also giving me that vibe of like this person having that their favorite thing about you because they feel like with the swan you know Swan is sometimes something, and a spirit animal I see as someone very talented at something. Um, when I, whenever I see a swan, <laughs> for some reason I can't talk now. Whenever I see a swan, 
I think of someone very graceful. Someone that does something and they just make it look so effortless, put together, majestic. What's the word that I'm trying to use? Angelic? But that's not the word. What's the word, spirit? I have it on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Elegant. Yes. Elegant is the perfect word to use. You know, whenever you're tapping into your intuition, you do it so elegantly and it looks so effortless and you have a real talent and gift when it comes to your intuition and your vision. And since we have this opposite the page of pentacles, I feel this ties in with the fluorite meaning, which I will describe in a bit. But I'm feeling like I'm almost seeing a line between the Ace of Swords and this card here. And this type of vibe of... Do some of you have tattoos? This person could like that. Uh, this vibe of like this person not only liking your voice, but also liking when you speak. Because somehow you always just know what to say to this person. Sometimes you'll say things to them and you have no idea that maybe they're feeling sad that day. Or maybe you do intuitively sense it or feel it or pick up on it. But it gives me the vibe of like, I'm, I'm saying something to you that you need to hear, but I have no idea that you're going through exactly this. Or I'm... I'm asking a silly example spirit showing me like I'm asking you are you hungry and in that moment they were thinking I'm hungry <laughs> it's like that type of intuitive energy where it's like I can sense when you need something I can sense when you need love I can sense when you're craving me I can sense when you're not okay it feels like a telepathic kind of bond or it just feels like you're very attentive to this person but this person also knows you are strongly intuitive so that's one thing they like about you one of their favorite things and definitely your voice and the way you say things there's a certain way you use to word things that makes this person feel like even in the darkest moments you light up their life since this card has yellow on it. I see it as you light up this person's life with your words. You light this person's day up with the, with your words, um, with communication. They love to have conversations with you, even when you're just speaking about things that interest you. And it doesn't necessarily have to mean they're interested in it, but they like to hear you speak and they like to just hear you speak your mind and, um, like, I'm getting this vibe of, with the Four of Cups, like, let's say they're really bored and you send them a message that makes them laugh or you send them an Instagram reel or let's say you live together or you're together and let's say they're really bored or just, like, mad that day <laughs> and then you, like, do something to make them smile or laugh or you suggest something that uh, brings back an excitement or... Uh, brings back this feeling of love. Does that make sense? That's that's the vibe I'm getting. I'm even getting like, let's say this person's at work or at school um, and they're like just going through the day, going through the mundane tasks. But then here you are like sending them a message and it lights up their whole day or sending them a good morning message or something along those lines. <laughs> that's what I'm getting there. Um, and I spoke about the peacock, this person sees you to have that type of intuition that makes you stand out, but also you as a person do stand out in your own beautiful way. As we know, peacocks have their beautiful colors and they stand out and the love letter, it's like same thing, communication, um, and you speak your words with love. Maybe you are really romantic with your words or you have a way with your words that really touches this person's heart. That's one of their favorite things about you. Um, I feel you're very nurturing, even with the baby bird here. You're very nurturing. That's coming through strongly. 
And I'm talking about these two cards. Oh, I just got goosebumps. So, fluorite, I'm reading about it, and it is a good crystal for assisting us with focus, clear thinking, creative inspiration, and calming down. Okay, I feel this person, whoever we're asking about, sees you as not only very intuitive, you have that side of the left brain. Well, I could be wrong, but this is how I see it. I see it as the left brain is intuition. Let me just... Left brain is creativity, I think. Let me just Google and make sure. I could be wrong. But, like, I'm just going off what I feel here. Oh, okay, no. Right side of the brain is creativity. That's what it says in Google. Okay, I was wrong there. <laughs> but um, I also see the left side as our intuition in in terms of the body and spirituality. So this person sees you as like, you can connect to that side of your brain that has intuition, that has great imagination, a great eye for future vision. And uh, while my eyes are closed, spirit is showing me mushrooms. So that gives me the vibe of enlightenment, wisdom, um, your connection to source energy, your connection to spirituality, your ability to dream big, use your imagination, and use creativity for some of you. And then you also have this ability to connect to the other side of your brain, or the other side of you that is more human, that is more... So you have this uh, side of you, like the star, that is more spiritual, that is more connected to that higher realm, but then you're also connected to the side of you that is more human, that is more logical, that is more um, smart and using your brain and focus and willpower, determination. So this person sees you to have the best of both worlds in that sense where it's like you are very focused and determined and you're an amazing learner, you know, because the page of pentacles and the fool tells me even when you start out something and you don't necessarily have all the knowledge on it, you have a determination and a vision for what you want and that vision helps you go towards that and learn and grow and allow your mind to take on information, okay? And I feel here what this is telling me. This person's attracted, and one of their favorite things is your focus. Um, not only, now I'm hearing that song, Focus On Me. I think it's Ariana Grande. <laughs> um, not only when you focus on them and you treat them good and you're so nurturing, but also where you put your focus. You know where to put your focus intuitively, when to put your focus on it, how long to put your focus on it. Even if you don't consciously do it intuitively, you do. Um, you know how to put your focus on something to grow within that, even when you're not necessarily an expert at it. And create that energy where you learn so much that you become the swan, that you become the peacock, that you become this very talented person. You go from the fool, this baby bird still learning, and then you become the swan um, that has so much talent and this mastery. So that's what I feel here. So fluorite also repairs and cleanses your auric field while simultaneously activating your chakras. So I feel like you could have a very healing energy to this person. And since we see um, white flowers here, this person sees you as a very pure soul. That's another one of their favorite things about you. Okay, because I feel like your healing energy is just your energy just feels good. Um, maybe they don't say the word healing if they don't know about energetic things but it feels very good your energy and, and you feel like such a pure soul that could do no wrong um and you definitely have a duality to you like you do 
understand the shadow and how to learn from it and how to grow from it and how to evolve and use that introspection to go within and look within our pain. Really look within into our emotions, our thoughts, our strengths and our weaknesses and address our grievances, you know, so that we can transform like the butterfly here. So another aspect here, I see this person likes the fact that you're always evolving, always growing, always transforming and they see it as we can grow together, we can create together. This person sees you as someone with traits that embody a good life partner, if this is romantic, or a long-term friendship, or something long-term here. Fluorite also keeps us calm in the midst of chaos. That's what I said earlier. You know how to calm this person when they are in the midst of chaos. And it urges us to be flexible rather than boxing ourselves in. So you could be very flexible to change, or you could be learning to, okay? Um, and it also boosts our self-confidence so we can speak our mind and articulate our thoughts and ideas. So you could be very confident in the way that you speak. You could be very intelligent. You could have amazing ideas, an amazing eye or vision for things and an amazing way of articulating those thoughts. Um, this person just loves when you talk, just loves your conversations, loves your self-confidence. Your self-confidence rubs off on them in the best way where it makes them feel confident too. That's one of their favorite things about you too. And definitely the transformation part is um, a strong one. I'm just looking in the guidebook at um, the star Asturian, I'm not sure what it means. So it says here, um, the star Asturian is depicted as a hound, a hunting dog that plays a metaphor for you taking a deep, a deep dive to hunt inward for answers. It is a representation of your willingness to make the effort to refocus your mind, emotions, and thoughts to heed in a direction that gives you the opportunity to grow and develop spiritually. Mindful, healthy reflection can bring you back to yourself and connecting you back to your body, emotions, thoughts, and spirit. So you could be someone really willing to make the effort to go within to focus your intention on what you want to grow in this in this lifetime, what you want to go towards and rush towards. I feel you're very ambitious in that sense. And you have this big picture thinking mindset this person likes, or you are developing that. Since it is depicted as a hound, a hunting dog, I see dogs as very loyal, very much full of unconditional love, but Hunting makes me think like you go after what you want. Even with the Knight of Swords, you go after what you want. That's something this person likes about you. And you put in a lot of effort towards where you want to focus your mind, emotions, thoughts, and actions. So that you can grow in each aspect of your life. This is this person's favorite thing about you because you're very mindful of bringing yourself back to you, back to mind, body, spirit, and back to the sense of self-love. Even in moments where we don't feel great about ourselves, even in moments where it's like, I read something about true self-confidence and true self-love. It's not, oh, I will love myself when I have a million dollars. No, it's like, I love myself even when I have nothing. I love myself even when I don't have the body that I want. I love myself even when things aren't going right in my life. That is the time where we're supposed to love ourselves the most. And I feel like maybe you're also learning that sense of self-love in the sense of like loving who you are right now because I feel you're someone that evolves a lot. But I think what you're also learning now is Loving where you're at right now, loving who you are right now, because it's like, yes, we're going to evolve into the future version of ourselves we have a vision for, but it's like, in order to allow ourselves to transform into that with the most harmony, 
loving the version of us right now and saying the version of us right now is enough is the best thing you can do. So I feel like this is maybe what you're learning and this is like what this person sees in you or you are already at this place. Okay, so that's that's what I see here. So let's tie off this message spirit. You see my pal wants, I'm not making this up, as I close my eyes I see a diamond ring. Like all these traits I mentioned are why they see you as a life partner or someone they can be friends with for a really long time, someone they can have in their life in a long-term aspect. So I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye! Hi there my pal number twos, if you chose this shell and the card trust, this reading is for you. We're going to be taking a look at the person on your mind and their favorite things about you. So please be aware this is a general reading, only take or resonates, leave the rest. The card you chose is from the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle. Um, it has a crystal or in this case it says ammonite which is not a crystal i think it's some kind of shell fossilized shell if i'm not mistaken i will google more into it in a moment and it says palace and trust card number 31 so we're going to be using the beyond the murray oracle deck the starseed oracle deck and the crystal magic tarot for you i heard the word restructuring when I closed my eyes, I saw an image of someone, you know, remodeling or restructuring their home, um, cleaning it up, painting it, something like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean you actually are restructuring your home. It could mean that you are in the midst of restructuring yourself, um, your own foundation, because the home is a foundation. So... That could be significant to this reading. Also, when I looked at this card, I was seeing like a diamond chandelier. But then I also saw something about like you. If you wear makeup or if you are a woman, I was seeing like this person really, in terms of physical aspects, likes the way you do your makeup and the way you get dressed up and the way you express yourself in that certain way. Um, likes when you feel good about yourself especially like I'm seeing for example maybe a woman watching and asking about her lover for example or a man she's interested in um, or a woman she's interested in, or someone else anyone uh, but it's like maybe them seeing you get ready and it's not the fact that maybe like you look beautiful with the makeup like yes you you do or you look beautiful when you get dressed up it's it's more so the fact that you feel good about yourself like when you take the time to do something that makes you feel good or when you take the time to do like self-care in whatever way self-care is to you whether it's making your bed making yourself a nice fulfilling and nutritional meal, going to the gym or exercising or going for a run or doing yoga or meditating or watching a nice tarot reading, listening to a Reiki healing on YouTube, doing a face mask. There's something here about you doing things for you that feel good, that make you feel good and nourished inside. And then this person feels good when they look at you being happy. I'm also seeing someone get excited about food <laughs> and this person likes when you're happy. Um, so I don't know if some of you are foodies. Remember, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. But we could also definitely say a favorite thing they have is like maybe the way you express yourself with clothes, clothing, with fashion, with uh, makeup, if you wear makeup or the way you do or style your hair. I'm seeing jewelry, I'm seeing perfume. Um, of course, when we look at favorite things, there could be physical traits, but also personality traits. So keep that in mind. So let's take a look at your cards now. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, it was 111 when we started your reading. Um, really cool. And then I also saw the number 1313. 13. We have 31 here um, as I was speaking. 
So spirit guides in my pile number twos. The person on their mind's favorite things about my pile twos. I'm seeing someone sing. For you, I'm seeing lots of visions for things. I'm seeing someone sing and like sing in their room or sing in their shower or their bath or something. Um, that may not resonate with everyone. <laughs> so interesting that this evolution card has a mermaid on it and when I was looking at this shell I was like pile two is my pile of mermaids of sirens of people with that seduction where you're able to lure a person in so if you're asking about someone in a romantic sense they feel like you definitely have a siren quality to you in the way that you look um, and it's not just seduction, but I also saw someone sing and we think of sirens and how they sing. They have beautiful voices. Maybe you have a beautiful voice and harmonic voice to this person to listen to. Um, but mermaids are also just mystical, otherworldly creatures. Uh, you know, when I think of them, some people think of them to be very scary, like, but it's maybe the way they see it. It's the perception of that, like, okay, but I look at it in more of a mystical way, in more of a, you know, enchanting, otherworldly, ethereal way, where it's like, there are magical beings that have the ability to alter things in reality, like, I really believe if they're real, maybe they have that ability to um, speak telepathically or to because I once had a dream about mermaids speaking me, to me telepathically, but like they weren't necessarily looking like this. They looked kind of like whales, <laughs> um, but they were a different type of mermaid. Anyways, I'm going off topic, but I see them as like more mystical, more ethereal, like more of a healing energy. And maybe this is what you embody, like this otherworldly, ethereal, healing energy. Maybe you have a beautiful connection to the ocean or to water in some way. The water card also wanted to come out. Or maybe you are a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio for some of you. Or maybe you have that within your chart. And when we talk about water, maybe you, if you're not a water sign, maybe you're someone that embodies the sense of flow, flowing through your life and being very majestic in some way, being very otherworldly and ethereal and very connected to your own emotions and the sense of connecting to your heart in a very graceful way. So that's what I'm getting there. At the back of the deck we have great, uh, why do I say grateful? Maybe your gratefulness is something they find one of their favorite things. So it says here, endless opportunities. So spirit guides in my pile number twos, what are their favorite things about pile two? We have called with soul gifts and training. It's time to step up. Hmm. At the back of the deck, we have surrender to the sweetness with Venus energy, pleasure, joy, make love to life. With Venus energy here, Venus is the planet of beauty, art, aesthetic, well, not really art, but that aesthetic and that appreciation and admiration of beauty, where we see beauty in everything and we see everything as like art, almost like that muse energy. Maybe this may, I don't know why I'm saying muse energy, but like maybe this person sees you as their muse or sees you as a work of art, sees you as very divine in some way. Um, regardless of if this was romantic or not, they see the beauty within you, the inner beauty, but also the external beauty or the external attractiveness or handsomeness. You know, even if, for example, even if this is a friend, even if they're not attracted to you per se, it's like we can still admire the beauty within a friend. Um, like, for example, I like to tell my friends they're beautiful because I do see them as beautiful inside and out, you know. Um, so this person definitely sees that within you and also in the external. They definitely see that and admire that within you. But Venus is also a planet of love. So I feel like this person's favorite thing about you 
is that you're very connected to your heart. You're very connected to that energy within you. Some of you could also be Libras or Tauruses or have that in your chart or prominent Venus energy. Um, it's like you're very connected to your own heart and the sense of love for all, harmony for all, and bringing the sweetness to the whole world and to the person on your mind and to everyone that surrounds you. You put your heart into everything you do and you put your heart into every conversation you have. You put your heart into every situation you're in. This person finds it very sweet to be around you, finds it almost like I'm hearing paradise to be around you, feels like they're in a paradise, it feels very joyful and pleasurable and I'm not just exaggerating but I'm hearing that. So now let's take a look at your tarot cards and I feel like it's also your energy, like I said this otherworldly energy you have um, sort of takes people to another plane. Spirit is showing me that meme that went around like a few months ago or a year ago. I don't know. I haven't been catching up with Instagram and things lately. Um, but it's like something like take you to this place. I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's like take you to this place. <laughs> I'm probably not explaining it correctly, but it's like you almost take people to another place. Like, let's say they're with you, you take them to another place that feels a little bit more mystical, that feels a little bit more ethereal and like up in the sky, head in the clouds, dreamy. Uh, you have a very dreamy energy to you. And it's like you take people to another realm where it feels very much more colorful, it feels more joyful, more full of love, and it's energy, it's your energy, you know, um, and it feels very much more like a paradise. <laughs> so spirit guides are my pile number twos, um, and you can take that message even if this is a friendship, so spirit guides of pile two, what are their favorite things about my pile number twos? So we have the Nine of Pentacles with Budstone coming up first. Nine of Pentacles energy, love that. King of Pentacles with Peridot. If any of you have tattoos or piercings, that could be significant or wear earrings or jewelry, something like that, and here we see her eating. Then I mentioned something about like being excited to eat. Did I mention that? Okay, so um I kind of got interrupted there when my boyfriend came into the room. Um but I'm getting this vibe of like maybe for some of you it's a sign because we have so many pentacles cards, two of pentacles, bloodstone, um I'm getting the vibe for one of you or two of you. It's not going to resonate with everyone. Like, um, maybe you work with this person. Or they like to, like, let's say you work from home. Seeing a scenario where maybe someone works from home. And then they like the fact that you're working from home. Because it's like, they get to sit with you even when you're on the laptop in a Zoom or Teams meeting or like that type of energy, even if it's not the way I describe. That's a specific message for maybe one or two people, not everyone. We have the Emperor with Lapis Lazuli. Um, but also since I got a distraction there, like maybe this person likes to sometimes, for example, call you during the day, like maybe while you're busy doing something or maybe you do that to them, like while they're busy doing something, uh, you call them and it maybe lightens up their day because they know you care. Something about like actions and like um, showing you care through your actions as well because we have a lot of pentacles cards. So I feel like maybe you're a very action oriented person with this person. Like that's the vibe I get here. Or you show them love through maybe physical... I don't know, I want to say ceremonies. It's 1331. 
<laughs> I wanted to say physical acts. Um, like I see here maybe someone, um, for example, asking about a friend and liking to beg for their friends and their friends come over or um, whenever your friends come over, you know, maybe you borrow them lipstick or eyeliner or <laughs> that's just like a silly example or um, let's say you're asking about a lover and um, like I said, maybe you like to cook for them or maybe you like to buy thoughtful gifts or maybe you like to show your love through things you do like making them a priority or um, through consistently showing them your love through pouring into them every day and being consistent with that and with your actions or um, being very vocal about the way you feel with lapis lazuli that could be that too um, that's the vibe I get there. We have the lover's card with tumulated, tumulated quartz. Sorry about that. <laughs> and we have the high priestess with labradite. Some of you could relate to pile number one, by the way. Pile number one had lots of intuitive energies. And then the five of cups wants to pop out. Uh, at the back of the deck, we have the Six of Pentacles, showing your generosity. Um, this could also be your generosity to the, towards this person. Like, you could be very generous with your love, with your caringness, with your time, with your energy. Um, it could be in different ways for all of you, like I explained earlier. But this person feels you show them a lot of time, attention, care generously in a way that they really love for some reason I never noticed the parrot here I think that's a parrot or a bird uh before but now I'm noticing it and we see lots of pets on this card so maybe some of you have pets or maybe some of you um love animals in some way or love children in some way and it's like maybe that's a trait this person likes in you or if you have pets in the way you treat your pets could be coming through for maybe someone here. Uh, by the way, in pile number one, we also spoke about the swan. So it's interesting that it came out here with the lovers and the high priestess. <laughs> or maybe some of you are from pile one. So it's not a coincidence that this Eight of Cups card has food on it and I'm smelling delicious food. I don't know if some of you like to cook. Like, I'm really getting that for one person or two people here. Like, if you like to cook for the people you love, they love your food. Like, that's their favorite. It's not their favorite thing about you per se, but it's like a cherry on top. They really enjoy that and they feel loved through the way you show, like, love, if that makes sense, or... Maybe they love to spend time with you and eat with you or like go to restaurants with you. Something about that's coming through or like to see you happy. Maybe you like to eat. Um, maybe food makes you happy. I can relate to this pile a lot. Um, what I'm definitely getting, I said something about restructuring. Um, I see a combination of these three cards. So let's analyze it. So. Earlier I spoke about something like you having a very big heart. I do still see that and, you know, it's even depicted in the lover's card. Look at the heart here. <laughs> this person's favorite thing about you is your heart, your beautiful, beautiful heart. However, I feel like Spirit is showing me a car that has been dented, right? And we spoke about restructuring and now we're seeing like a car, um... Think of your house like you, it's your foundation, and then maybe your car is your heart, I don't know, I don't know why Spirit's showing our cars are hearts, but anyways, um, it reminds me of the, what's that word again, the Merkaba, um, apparently it transports us, and like I was watching something about, about a pick a card reading on I don't think who's who it is. I think her name is Shamanic Insights. I absolutely love her channel. 
She has so much wisdom, so definitely check her out. She speaks, she spoke about one of her pick a card readings, like our heart being a portal or something like that. So it kind of reminds me of like that portal energy and that Merkaba energy, like transporting us to another place. Um, and what I, I, I think I heard this somewhere or read this somewhere. I'm not sure where, but something about like, the heart chakra being the most important one. So if all our chakras were to not be there, if we just had the heart, we would still be able to, or this is just what I read, I don't know if it's true or heard, um, that we'd still be able to operate somewhat as humans. Um, and it's like our heart is the most important thing energetically. So I feel like you've been through a lot of heart healing since that five of cups wanted to pop out you've been going through a lot of heart healing and as i look at this kind of crystal in this crystal here and it's like going <laughs> oops <laughs> going within ourselves you know and it's like a spiral because it's like healing isn't linear it's a spiral into ourselves like a staircase into our own hearts and going deeper and deeper and deeper within and clearing out all the old cl clutter and restructuring our hearts, um, rebuilding it back up to where it's supposed to be, but also rebuilding ourselves back up to allow ourselves to evolve. And as we, as we do this, Spirit is showing me, you know, when you're moving, funny thing, <laughs> I was speaking to someone about moving earlier before you're reading now I'm getting this vibe of like restructuring the home as a metaphor and moving so when we are moving you know how we will go through our stuff we will have a box many boxes full of things and then we'll look through it and then we'll be like chuck this away we don't need it um and then we'll take this and we're like oh I've been looking for this for years. Like, where has this been? Um, and that's what I'm getting with the pearl here. Like, finding valuable things within ourselves when we look within, when we are um, doing the work, the inner work and the healing work. I spoke about water earlier. Water is about emotions. So doing the work and going within and deep within our own emotions, diving deep within our own psyche. And I'm seeing the 12th house energies um, and into the unseen, into that world of subconscious behaviors, subconscious patternings, conditionings, traumas. I'm hearing neglect, um, betrayals, disappointments. Why am I hearing the word monstrosities? Like, just awful things that have happened to us that we're healing from. But um, also within that, there are lighter things like little dents on the car, for example, that we want to heal and that we want to... I, I don't want to use the word fix, but we use the word fix our car. So it's like we're rebuilding it. We are rebuilding it back to maybe not its original state or quality, but we're making it something beautiful. And... A vision I always see is something about like heart healing and the Japanese and how they take a broken piece of pottery or ceramic. I've used this example many times on my channel. I don't know if it's for the same pile, but it's like, I see it sometimes as the heart, you know, that hearts can be a little bit broken. I don't want to use the word broken, but can be a little bit broken sometimes. And then we pour into ourselves and then there's that liquid gold. And we're putting it back together, but making it something even more valuable. Does that make sense? So when they pour the liquid gold into this broken pottery or ceramic, they make it one again, take all the broken pieces and fragments and put it together to make it whole again. And then it's something even more valuable. It has a shine to it. It has something beautiful to it a story to it and this is what I feel here with the pearl it's like we're going within we're restructuring you know picking back the pieces of our heart and rebuilding ourselves back up from the start being patient with ourselves giving ourselves time to let go of things we cannot control and giving ourselves to let go of things that we're healing from our past giving ourselves time to 
give ourselves love even in moments when we feel unlovable or even in moments when we feel unloved or that inner child version of us is hurting. I will get to my point in a minute. This is part of the reading. But it's like when we're able to love ourselves in those deep moments of healing, when we're able to be gentle with ourselves and compassionate with ourselves and, you know, give ourselves that love, pour into ourselves then we find the pearl, we find the magical treasure within ourselves as we heal on our journey and we evolve and we move to the next level and we restructure in a way, but we evolve. Like I'm thinking of someone rebuilding their house and restructuring it, but it looks way better in the after pictures than the before pictures. So it's like, it's like this thing of like, we think we've lost something. Yes, we have lost something and our emotions are valid, tying us to something from the past. But it's like, when you look back at it in the future, you're like, this gave me an opportunity to restructure this and make it even stronger than it was before and uh, build it into something that I like even more. So I see it as you going through this evolution journey where you are healing your heart from all past pains and being patient with yourself and growing within self-love, learning to pour into your own heart, finding the magical treasures, the, the hidden gems within yourself and within those emotional aspects of healing um, and finding the pearl within that and also evolving and growing as you do that and rebuilding yourself back up from the ground. That is showing in true self-love, like loving yourself and picking yourself back up even in moments when you feel the lowest. But I'm also hearing that song Take Care by Drake, but also allowing this person to take care of your vulnerable heart and to hold it gently and trusting them in turn that they're not going to break it and them also knowing that because you have qualities of you having this beautiful big heart, being such a lover at heart, regardless of if this is romantic or not, you're such a lover at heart that this person knows they can provide their full trust and feel secure within giving you their heart in return. So that's a very beautiful message. This is one of their favorite things. Um, the Eight of Cups. As you're healing your heart from past things, past disappointments, you are turning a setback into a comeback. You're turning something that once hurt you or made you feel as if you were broken, but you were never broken. Build yourself back up, evolve from that, leave that behind in the past, let go of it. And sometimes it takes some time to let go. Sometimes it takes feeling in order to bring that energy of letting go but it's like when we're able to let go of that and move into the new and trust that better will come and that trust trust that if we trust ourselves with like certain lessons we've learned along the way and how we've evolved as souls and grown as souls we can trust that Maybe we can't always avoid disappointment or avoid heartbreak or avoid getting hurt or avoid challenges because that's, I don't want to say that's life, but it's like life is full of ups and downs and it doesn't always look perfect. But when we can put that trust in ourselves as well and that have that self-love of I think I spoke about this to Pa One, where we love ourselves even in the moments when we're our lowest and not just loving ourselves when we are at the top of the game or when we're at the top of the hill and when we're succeeding, but also loving ourselves when we're at our lowest period, when we're releasing, when we're feeling the heavy tides of emotions and giving ourselves sweetness and compassion and love in those moments supporting ourselves and allowing others to support us while we heal that shows this beautiful and gentle strength you have within this is this person's favorite thing about you their absolute favorite thing about you one of their most favorite things because you are so dedicated to yourself and to growing in self-love to not just your healing journey but 
you know, you're generous towards others, you're generous towards yourself. Um, you are learning to have balance with love towards yourself and love towards others. And you really show your love through everything you do, through every action you do, through every word you say, it feels very loving. This person sees you as a very gentle and graceful and beautiful soul that has a lot of potential to reach maybe not even the most evolved version of you to but but to reach this version of you that you feel happy with that you feel proud of yourself for and it's not just even about bullying yourself there because it's like this person sees the beauty and the love in you as who you are right now even before you've built yourself there but it's like I think this person the reason this is their favorite thing about you, it's because it shows a lot of gentle strength. When we see the starfish here, starfishes are much stronger than we think they are because they have this healing ability to reproduce something that was once lost or broken because you can cut off a starfish's leg, but it will always grow back. And I feel like that's you. You're always going to bounce back. You're like the phoenix rising, but it's this gentle kind of soft strength within you. Um, and I feel like with ammonites, I'm getting, if it is a fossilized, let me just Google and make sure. It's a fossil. Okay, so it's like I, I'm getting this vibe of like your soul being ancient in in some way. Your soul being so wise, your soul being so evolved as well um, maybe this person doesn't know that on a conscious level but I see their higher self coming through and saying that and their higher self being so proud of you on your journey and it's not just in this lifetime how you've evolved but I feel like your soul has mastered many things across many different lifetimes and many different dimensions um, and it's like their higher self is so proud of you and so shocked but also seeing you as this person with a lot of gracefulness and having this talent for you know always always transforming and evolving and taking something and even if that thing you take isn't the greatest thing but you take it and you turn it into something golden you turn it into something worth like worth something very valuable where it's like like this pearl, almost like, I hope I'm explaining this correctly. <laughs> I don't know what word to use, but it's like you take something that wasn't necessarily great. I'm seeing Wally and how he takes um, the rubbish and he makes it into the square, <laughs> but I'm seeing it like you, like Wally, taking the rubbish out of um, our heart centers and all the rubbish people have thrown onto us from their own hurt and pain and you know making it into a square but then putting gold within it or putting diamonds within it um making it something valuable and what I take from that is like the wisdom you learn from it too yeah and lapis lazuli is also a very intuitive crystal very much connected to the throat chakra and the the intuition um, so I feel like this person sees you as very intuitive, very connected to your own intuition, and um, they see you as royalty in some way. They see you embodying a lot of, like, queen, king energy, just in the way that you are, but in the best possible way. Like, when you look at a king or a queen, and they embody that leadership energy, but they're also a good role model. They also care for their community and the people around them. And they're that leader. They step into that leadership role. This person sees those traits within you and sees you being so connected to your own intuition, so connected to your own soul in the most beautiful way. You, the, you are the divine embodiment of the soul and the heart. But I also feel when you really put your mind towards something, when you really have your vision set on something, you're able to go after, after it, be a busy, busy bee with the bees here um, and make that honey. <laughs> but like make all that you want to grow come to life. 
with the nine of pentacles and water whatever you want to grow within your life whether it is a goal whether it is relationship whether it is uh, your career your studies friendships a home family like whatever you water turns to gold whatever you touch turns to gold whatever you water and put your time and energy to turns into something so beautiful and grows and grows and grows and becomes something so stable and so full of love you are a lover at heart you're romantic and when you really set your mind to stepping up to whatever you want to focus on you build up so much talent and so much of this effortless gracefulness where it's like you do it so much that you become so talented and you become a master at it whether it is your own healing journey your career your goals your studies uh, creativity your intuition it's like you become a master at it that's what I see here and this person feels like they see a lot of themselves in you they feel like you two mirror a lot of qualities to each other and they feel like you two are one and the same in some way like you two embody and mirror a lot of the same qualities and the same heart back to each other as I end off I just want to check um, the guidebook for trust and palace but I feel like that's self-explanatory with trust like you are a trustworthy person they can rely on you they can count on you I'm hearing the song you got a friend in me so as I end off let's just read about palace because I don't know about it I said something about you being a queen or a king and palace kind of sounds like palace Ooh, now I say palace I'm hearing that song palace curse um by the internet and it's like baby you make me believe something like i can fall in love for real something like that i could be wrong about the lyrics and then she says like baby i'm under your curse but i see that as like not a curse but like it's almost like baby i'm under you know your spell in some way like where this person maybe just wants to be with you or just wants to be around you um and the song is actually a very um sensual song so I'll just say that for the romantic um people like people asking about romantic or crush that could be a song to listen to <laughs> um you'll know what I'm talking about when you listen to it I'm not going to explain it uh so it says here about Pallas. It's an asteroid which was named after the goddess Pallas Athena to bring you the energy of skill, wisdom, and courage. Okay, Pallas, a beautiful combination of feminine energy intertwined with masculine strategic intelligence, allows your intuitive and creative aspects to rise to the surface do not overthink it sit comfortably sit comfortably within these energies and allow yourself to feel and trust those feelings and vibrations so this is what you embody embodying the intuitive and creative aspects and athena is a very strong goddess maybe google her maybe you embody some of her qualities and traits um but you also have a lot of skills. You also have a lot of wisdom and courage. And this beautiful energy of like sitting within your feelings and sitting within your intuition and trusting it. Trusting what your soul gifts are telling you. Trusting your instincts, your intuition. This is this person's favorite things about you. So this is what I have for you. I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye. Hi there, my pal number threes. If you chose this rose quartz crystal and the card divine love, this reading is for you. We're going to be taking a look at the person on your mind and their favorite things about you. So please be aware this is a general reading. Only take or resonate to leave the rest. The card you chose is from the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle and it says Pink Amethyst, card number 16, with the Soul Star Chakra and Divine Love. 
So I'm going to use the Beyond the Murray Oracle deck, the Starseed Oracle deck, and the Crystal Magic Tarot. So let's get started with your reading. So I don't know why Spirit is guiding me to pull Tarot first, do things a little bit different with your pile, but maybe that's the first uh, sign here. Like maybe when, because like in most of the piles I did first Oracle cards, maybe you're someone that like, does things a little bit differently to others where like others will normally do things this way you do it another different way or maybe others will usually be like this you'll be the opposite like I get this sort of unpredictable vibe with you like um expect the unexpected <laughs> I get this vibe of you being very unique and authentic to yourself and striving within that, striving within your uniqueness. Striving, is that the wor word to use? Thriving. <laughs> Why did I say striving? Uh, thriving within that, okay? Um, or maybe you are striving to be more of your authentic self and use that uniqueness of yours to your advantage and see it as something beautiful and love that uniqueness within you and let that unique side of yours be seen and loved by you and others. I feel with this unpredictability, it's like a good unpredictability where maybe I say this to you and I expect you to say this back, but you say something else that catches me like completely off guard in the best way or maybe like I expect you to make this move but then you make another move and it takes me off guard in the best possible way like I'm getting that type of vibe and like you just being very different and unique and that's something this person likes about you so <laughs> the empress card uh fell well didn't fall down was out Maybe you embody Empress energy, this Venusian energy. Some of you may relate to Pile 2, by the way. Um, some of you may have Libra or Taurus placements or just have a lot of Venusian energy. Venus energy is all about the planet of love, beauty, um, aesthetic, that type of energy of admiring the beauty within us as human beings within others and within the world so you could have a very beautiful perception eye for beauty eye for aesthetic um, in the way that you dress in the way that you express yourself but it's very you it's very unique to you I um, mean it's like you see things from a very beautiful perspective of the world like you see things in a very different perspective than most see and the way you perceive the world and communicate that when this person sees that it helps them see the world in this beauty of divine love where it's like how are we going to choose to see the world we can choose to see the world as dark we can choose to see the world as as ruthless and hopeless but then that's the life we're going to live yes the world is full of duality but what do we want to see in the world what do we want to be in the world to bring more of that into the world and I feel like that's the energy you embody um, you embody this energy of like seeing the world with beauty and seeing the beauty within yourself or learning to see that and love yourself more um, and seeing the beauty and the divine within others I really feel that. You could also be very aesthetically pleasing to the eye to look at, very handsome, beautiful, or attractive. And you could also have a lot of inner beauty within your heart, within the way you love. The way you love is a very divine way of loving. Okay? You could do everything with love, speak to people with love. Everything you do embodies this divine love. You are the embodiment of divine love, of this authentic expression of your soul. So, Spirit Guides of Pile 3. I guess this card wanted to come out. This card. What are their favorite things about Pile 3? See, even I'm not showing the cards yet, so I feel like first pulling them. Okay. So temperance with Lapido light. Okay. 
the hanged man with iolite. I'm hearing the road less traveled when other people, I'm seeing a queue, right? And everyone stands in this queue, but you go in the other queue. <laughs> um, or um, when people are usually going in this direction, you go in another direction, the road less traveled, if that makes sense. We have the six of pentacles with yellow topaz. The Nine of Pentacles with Budstone. The Judgment card with Amazonite. Um, I'm also feeling... <laughs> I'm feeling sexual energy for some of you. Like if you're asking about a romantic partner or a crush or something, they could find you very attractive in that way. That's a theme I've seen throughout all three piles. We have the lovers with terminated quartz. By the way, a lot of your cards came out in pile two, so if you were drawn, I highly recommend you watch it. I'm seeing angel wings. You could be seen as a very pure soul, very angelic to this person. One more card for their favorite things about pile three. And we have the Queen of Cups with Morganite showing up last. So now let's take a look at your Oracle cards. Three of Swords at the back of the deck. Highly recommend you watch Pile 2. I spoke about this energy exactly. But I think in your pile it's going to come through in a different way. So I'm physically seeing a vision of, you know when it's the last day of school? <laughs> And you're writing an exam and I'm seeing that vision of Britney Spears in that one music video when she's watching the clock tick. She's waiting for school to end. Um, and then you finally end and it, you go on holiday or something. Um, this is how you make this person feel sort of like um, that beautiful ending. Like not you ending something with them, of course, but... Maybe they felt like they had some kind of beautiful ending before they met you where something ended that they wanted to end. Uh, for example, could have been a relationship that ended in their life that maybe they felt that they weren't loved in that connection or they felt wasn't healthy for them in, in, the, in the long run or um, maybe they ended a job that they always wanted to end or maybe they moved uh, to a different city before they met you. It gives me the impression that some kind of big change happened before they met you and when they came into your life it felt almost like you know when you're on holiday and you're falling in love. Now I'm seeing um Alex Russo from Wizards of Waverly plays the movie where they go on holiday and she finds a holiday love and you make this person feel like that even if you didn't have a holiday love with them even if this is not romantic. Um, I'm speaking metaphorically and it's like you make this person feel almost like their soul is on holiday like they're in a very beautiful hot tropical place summery energy springtime energies um <laughs> where everything just feels very beautiful and flowy and relaxing and warm and just happy and content this is how you make this person feel so we have the card home and at the back of the deck we have beyond the mind and i'm noticing the paradigm shift card wanted to pop out which is all about change transformation of our reality this person could view you in a sense where it's like maybe you really changed their whole reality as soon as you came into their life it's like you rocked their whole world around and changed it up in the most beautiful way so what are their favorite things about my pile threes so we have a new earth <laughs> You see, this is a huge synchronicity. It's happening. Keep holding the vision. Mm. I'm hearing the song Home by Snow Allegra. And in the song, ooh, my voice kind of like quaked there. I don't know if quaked is <laughs> cracked. 
<laughs> what does quaked mean? I don't know. I'm trying to use words today and it's not the right word to use. <laughs> My voice kind of cracked there. So um, what I'm getting from this, the spiritual meaning of a home is the place you feel where you belong. The place you feel at home, the place you feel cherished, the place you feel loved, the place where you feel you belong. I get the sense that maybe this person didn't have the type of home life or family or upbringing that they would have wanted, like the type of divine love they would have wanted growing up there in a child. And I'm feeling a weight on my back. And it's reminding me of that song, Bag Lady by Erica Badu, where she sings about sometimes we carry the weight on our back of the baggage, the emotional baggage of things we've gone through within our lifetime. And I feel like this person has been carrying this weight on their back, whoever we're asking about, of not feeling a sense of belonging, feeling a little bit out of place in the world, feeling like they don't usually fit in or no one really loves them the way they want to be loved, feeling like there is no home, feeling like the sense of I'm searching for home everywhere I go outside of myself. But I feel like at some point, this person had to find that home within themselves before they could meet you. Because um, I'm also hearing that song, Two of Hearts, Two Hearts That Beat As One. So it's like you two have the same heart, the same um, type of love and I think this person has been longing for that sense of home longing for um, that sense of community that sense of belonging um, and that feeling of being divinely loved being unconditionally loved being chosen in some way being committed to being shown generosity and safety and comfort and love an acceptance for who they truly are because I feel like this person feels the same as you, feels like they're very different, feels like they're very unique and feels like they never really had a place where they were accepted or felt like they belonged or fit in but with you it feels like everything seamlessly fits perfectly together, it feels like I'm at home, it feels like I'm loved in a way Maybe my inner child wanted to be loved, but now it's like you're giving me that that type of love and filling the holes within my heart of like the love I never received. And when my heart is cracked open and broken and I have no way to go, I have no place to turn, you crack it wide open and inside we see a beautiful geode. And you fill this beautiful geode with love. And it's kind of like, it's similar to Pile 2 in a sense, but different. Where it's like, you are almost mending this person's heart in some way. And not in an unhealthy way where it's like, I'm looking for a place in of home within another person. Or like, I... It's not like an unhealthy codependent type of vibe. It's it's a type of vibe of like this person feeling maybe they have healed or they have taken some time out to look at some things within themselves and, you know, question what they really wanted, kind of come back home to themselves. But then at the same time, it's that sense of needing that community within others, needing that sense of not feeling alone when they're going through things, feeling like they have someone they can lean on for support and love and knowing that they're not for everyone, that not everyone is going to accept them or love them as they are, but you do and you see them, you see them and you accept them and you give them all the love in the world. And I'm feeling like... um even the parts of this person that they've tossed away in the trash and they've deemed unlovable or unworthy, you've deemed it as the most beautiful thing and opened it up, cracked it open and saw the geode and the beauty within that and sent love towards that. And this person feels the sense of awakening and the sense of an integration of lessons from 
you know, whatever lessons they've learned within this lifetime with Earth at the back of the deck, learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. And this feeling of like, I've been looking for home all my life. And now I found it within another person. I'm probably part of this pile <laughs> for someone specific. I feel like this is how I feel about someone specific in my life. And to be a little bit vulnerable, I never had, you know, that family I wanted growing up. And I feel I relate to this person's energy and their perspective. But sometimes later on, you meet people in your life that feel more like that soul family, feel more like that true family, that true essence of love that you always seeked but never got, that you always longed for but never got. And then you make that your new family, your new home. Um, and I feel like you've completely transformed this this person's vision of the world. Maybe they had a vision of the world before that the world was a cold, dark and lonely place. I'm hearing that song like, I always walk alone or something like that. And as I close my eyes, I feel like almost like I want to tear up. It's 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock. And I'm seeing a... <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm seeing a proposal. Like, I don't know if this person wants to propose something to you. Like, I don't know why I'm seeing this in this reading. I saw it in pile one, two. And I don't just say this, pile three. I don't just say this. But I'm literally seeing this person um, and a heart-shaped thing like a ring holder and then you open it and inside is a beautiful ring. So I'm not going to take that as a specific message, but I just see it as this person sees you as home, sees you as someone they can commit to, either in platonic or friendship or love, romantic or whatever type of way they see it as they can commit to you. And if you are married to this person, then that's your confirmation. But if you want to get married to this person... <laughs> Maybe there is a potential potentiality of that um, if you two both choose to in this lifetime. This person also sees you as very sweet, like I'm seeing a cake and um, they want every last bite of this cake, which is you. <laughs> Not in a sexual way, but like in that type of way, you're just so sweet, they want to eat you up um, and like cherish all of you and really take it in. You know, when you're eating a good piece of cake and you just want to taste all of its deliciousness and really be present within that and take it all in. This is how this person feels around you. And as I close my eyes, I'm also seeing an enchanted mirror. This person feels like you're very beautiful to look at, but also feels like you mirror a lot of qualities they wanted within a partnership, within a friendship you mirror a lot of the love they always seeked and longed for. And it's like this person sees you as divine, sees you as royalty, sees you as the person they want to treat as the king or a queen. Um, <laughs> even if it's a friendship, it's like, um, you know, I'd even say to my friends, I want to treat you like a queen, girl. <laughs> um, because it's like, that's how we're supposed to treat those we love, you know, and I'm now seeing a cupcake, I'm now seeing a book, so book is about lessons, they feel like they're learning a lot with you, um, I don't know why I'm closing my eyes, but I'm seeing lots of things, I'm seeing that Spirit is showing me vision so fast, I'm losing my train of thought, <laughs> Um, I'm seeing that kind of cancer crab, I'm seeing, um, a swing like children play on and what I'm getting from that is like you make this person's inner child feel safe and loved and um, you help their inner child come out. You could be someone very connected to your own inner child and very playful. Maybe that's why it's picking up on the summary energy um, and it's like with the crab that's also cancer energy it's home it's it's your nurturing love the way you love so divinely the big heart you have it's completely transformed this person's vision of the world and completely transformed this whole their whole world in the best possible way and it's like I hear this person saying how did I get so lucky how did I get so lucky and I get goosebumps as I say that like I'm so blessed 
to have pile number three in my life. <laughs> I feel like crying tears of joy. Um, when I do the readings, I connect to this person's emotions and maybe they want to cry tears of joy, even if they're not someone that usually expresses that, their emotions on that, that level. Like maybe that's what they feel inside, like that sense of gratitude, like I want to cry tears of joy. <laughs> Um, I see their inner child being fulfilled with you in some way. So that song, Home by Snow Allegra, is like a big aspect to this reading, a huge message from this reading. Um, I highly suggest you listen to the song by her because it's such a beautiful song. It's just such a beautiful song and it perfectly, des perfectly describes how this person feels about you. Um, and... I think if I had to put this and translate this into words of their favorite things about you, their favorite thing about you is your heart and the way you love. Your big, big, big heart. I mean, you're showing up as the queen of cups here, my pal threes. You're someone very empathetic. You're someone very nurturing. You're someone with a big heart, a very kind heart. You're so sweet. You're so sweet like sugar, <laughs> like honey, like the most sweetest thing on earth. Okay, and you're like that glass of wine after a long day. You're like that holiday after working a whole year. You're like that blessing um, we've always wanted. <laughs> um, you're like that candle that has a beautiful smell. Like you're like that sense of pleasure uh, people feel when you're when they're around you. It's like it's a sense of relaxation and like I, I feel comfortable I feel at home I feel like I can let go of all my stress from the whole day from the whole month from the whole week and just relax with you like you have a very relaxing calming serene energy too and that's another favorite thing this person has about you and um, your uniqueness makes them feel like they can let their unique qualities out and it's like let's be weird together let's let's be unique together let's be silly together let's be comfortable together um, you make this person feel comfortable and because you're so peaceful so calm you provide this person safety in a way their heart hasn't felt safe before you have such a big heart and that's their favorite thing about you and you provide the type of love, comfort and reassurance that they've longed for all their life. Um, and you embody a lot of soul beauty and outer beauty, external attractiveness and beauty and it's like your heart, it's your divine way of loving. You're like this pink rose. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm really getting here is this person feels lucky to have you in their life. Feels like they've become so blessed. The way I was speaking now, it quietened down. It felt like all the messages were coming out at once. And now, now that I've got everything out that this person felt towards you, but maybe never expressed fully, Maybe they're waiting with the hangman to express this to you, waiting for the right time to give this to you in a way where they truly understand the way they feel and truly see the way they feel and can give it to you in a way that feels special. Um, it feels very much like I need to tell you all about how I feel. Um, and I have that sometimes like with people when... I really need to tell them how I feel. It feels very much like I'm trying to explain everything to them and everything about how I feel like very quickly, Not maybe not very quickly, but like trying to remember everything I want to say. And then when I'm done, it feels like this release, like I finally said what's really in my heart. And it kind of gives me this feeling like this person feels this way about you, but maybe wants to express this to you. Um, but wants to find the right words to use the right time to say this to you or the right way to show you this. But now it's, it's a sense of peace and calmness, like whatever important was meant to come out in the reading came out. You definitely feel like comfort, like a judgment-free safe space. 
You're also someone that waters those around you, helps those around you bloom, creates a peaceful environment where you can grow, where you can nurture yourself and grow and bloom. And this person is seeing you bloom in your own aspect in the most beautiful, divine, Venusian way. <laughs> the most perfect and loving way. They're seeing you bloom. Um, and they're very happy for you, I see right now. That's one of their favorite things about you because you can take anything and make that bloom. You could also really like animals or children or just have a very good and generous heart. That's another trait that is their favorite about you. Your patience. The hangman and the temperance gives me big patience vibes. Like you're very patient. I feel like even with maybe this person expressing certain things, for example, or um, taking it slow with you. Let's say this person's been taking it slow with you. Maybe you've been patient. You've been allowing them to take their time. Maybe they've been transforming in their own in their own space because we see snakes here and a snake here. And maybe they're in their cocoon moment and maybe you're not pressuring them to transform but allowing their own inner transformation to happen at their own time. And it gives me this vibe of like even when this person feels unlovable like in certain traits and they show those traits to you very hesitantly and you still cherish and love it and show no judgment. It just makes this person's heart feel complete and whole. So in this reading, we spoke a lot about how they feel about you. And like, I guess maybe their favorite thing about you is maybe the way it feels to be with you. Like the divine love they feel when they're with you. Um, and all those things tie up into one, if that makes sense. Like they love being around you and they love just having you in their life, in their heart. And they will always have you in their heart. You will always have them in your heart. Because home is where the heart is. So I think this is where I'm going to end off pile three. This was such a beautiful reading. I really hope this reading resonated. If it did, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I can't wait to see you in my next reading. Bye!